and we're going to learn about where the electrons are in atoms. So please read the book, chapter 11, sections 7 through 9. Uh, so where are the electrons? They're in energy levels, just like Bohr imagined. Um, the electrons traveled in energy levels. So here are the numbers for energy levels. Within the energy levels are sublevels, and here are the symbols for sublevels. And then here, how this is how many sublevels are in each energy level. So as electrons get further away from the nucleus, the energy levels are bigger, so they can hold more electrons. So um, here's the nucleus. In the first energy level, there's only one sublevel, so it's the tiny sphere in the middle. That's, when that's full, then the electrons need to go into the second energy level, and here's the sphere that represents the first place you would find them. And then here's the second place, third place, and fourth place you'd find electrons in the second energy level in the S and P sublevels. Once that's filled, you could go to the third energy level, and um, you'd find that 3S orbital. So here's what orbitals look like, and these are probability maps of electron density. This is an S sublevel, here's a P sublevel, here's a D sublevel, and here's an F sublevel. And you can see how many shapes there are per sublevel. So as you get higher sublevels, there are more places to put electrons. So how do the electrons fill these energy levels and sublevels? They fill the lowest energy sublevels first, and this is called the Aqua principle. Another rule we use to help us explain where electrons are is that only two electrons can fit in an individual orbital. And if they are in there, they have to have opposite spins. This is the Pauli exclusion principle. Exclusion principle. And then finally, um, if there is a whole sublevel that can be filled, one electron can go into each sublevel orbital before two electrons can go in. So um, this is the Huns rule. Huns rule, meaning if electrons have the chance to spread out, they will before they double up and fit two in an orbital. So let's represent how electrons fill energy levels in orbitals with orbital diagrams. Okay. So in an orbital diagram, circles represent the orbitals or squares and um, Electrons are represented with arrows. So the lowest energy orbital and level is the first energy level, and there's only one place to put electrons because it's so close to the nucleus. It's called the 1s orbital. So this represents an element, and each of these represent electrons. And so since there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 electrons, then this element is potassium because potassium has 19 protons which means it's going to have 19 electrons. This is a potassium. potassium. Now, in this orbital diagram, again, the 1s orbital is represented with a box. When that's full, then the 2s orbital fills up, and then the 2p sublevel with its three orbitals fill up, then the 3s orbital fills up, and then the 3p sublevel starts to fill. But it looks like this element doesn't need to use up all of the 3p sublevel because it only has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 electrons. So the element represented here is sulfur, because sulfur is the element with 16 electrons. These are called orbital diagrams, because you see the orbital represented as a, sphere, as a circle or square, and you see the electrons represented as arrows. So orbital diagrams um, represent electron configurations, and so do... Uh, a different notation, um, and that's what we're going to look at next. So here's an orbital diagram for sulfur, which we just talked about, but the electron configuration uses symbols and numbers instead of boxes and arrows. So we would say this is sulfur, so that we remember which element we're looking at. We'd write out the orbital, I mean the energy level in the orbital, and then instead of drawing arrows, we put the number two to represent one, to represent the two electrons that are in that sublevel. Then we'd write this energy level two and the sublevel S, we put two because there's two electrons. Then two P and there's six electrons there. And then three S, two because there's two electrons there. And then three P and there's four electrons in there. So the numbers 
numbers add up to number of electrons. Okay. All right. So energy level, sublevel, electrons. Okay. So let's just put this energy level, energy level, sublevel, sublevel, and then number of electrons. Okay. Just so you know, an S sublevel holds two electrons. P sublevel holds six electrons because there's three boxes. And then later we're going to find out a D sublevel, and I'm writing all over the page, but you guys can write it down, holds 10 electrons, and an F sublevel holds 14 electrons. I could go back to the picture to show you, but this is an example of a D sublevel. D sublevel. And look, there's five five circles, so it can hold ten electrons. All right, let's try to see how electrons fill orbitals. So this diagram you can draw in your book. Here's how you write it. You just start with seven s and go down to one s, and then seven p down to two p, six d down to three d, five f, and four f. And then to show how electrons fill those orbitals, you draw diagonal arrows carefully going up at a slight angle, tell you which order electron orbitals will fill. Okay. So we're going to do the electron configuration for sodium. So we're going to need the symbol for sodium, the number of protons, which equals the number of neutrons. I said neutrons. I meant electrons. Protons equals electrons in an atom. And so we're talking about an atom. So we need 11 electrons because we have 11 protons. All right. So then the first two electrons for sodium are going to fill up that 1s sublevel. Once that's filled, we start here and we go up. So we need the 2s, and that can only hold two electrons, so then that's full. Then we start down here and we get 2p, and we can put six electrons in a p sublevel, and then 3s. And we only need to put one there because 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 equals 11 electrons. So this is the electron configuration for sodium atoms. Now, what about a sodium ion? Well, sodium is a metal in group 1A, so it has a plus 1 charged ion. What does that mean? It means it's a loser. It makes a cat ion. So a uh, sodium ion has 10 electrons. So then we symbol again. Number of protons doesn't change, but now we have a plus one ion. So we'd have 1s2, because we fill up that. 2s2, because we fill up that. 2p6, because we fill up that. And then that's 10 electrons, so we're done. So this is the ion, because it has one less electron than the atom. Okay, you can also use the periodic table to do the same thing that this filling diagram does. Because if you look at the periods on the periodic table, um, over here in the periodic table is called the S block. Um, and then that's part of the S block, that's helium. This section is called D block. And then P block. There's another slide coming up that'll help. And then F block. Right. So we can use the periodic table to do the same thing we just did. So I'm going to pick the element uh, selenium which has atomic number 34, and it's going to be right here, 34 selenium. Here's selenium. I put the 34 really big. So here's selenium. It has 34 protons, and it has 34 electrons. So I have to get here on the periodic table. Where do I got to go first? 1s2. Notice that's this. And then I go to the second row on the periodic table, and over here I'm 2s, which matches this. So now I'm 2s2, and then I have to jump over to the 2p orbital um, sublevel, and I could fit six electrons there, and that's this one, so that's filled up, and that represents this part of the periodic table, one, two, three, four, five, six, whoo, nice. And then I go to the third energy level, which is represents the third period on the periodic table, fill up the s sublevel, okay, and then I go over to the 3p block, third energy level, p sublevel, could put six in there, all right, so I got to here, and um, that's 18 electrons. 
But I need to get to 34, so I'm done with that one. So what do I do after 3P? Well, it says 4S here. Look, fourth energy level, S sublevel. It says 4S there, too. Yeah, all right, too. But wait, now I have to go here on the periodic table. Right? So this is where scandium is on, scandium is on the periodic table. And notice what energy level it says, third energy level, and then the D sublevel. If I look at this diagram, look, 3D, it's the same thing. How many electrons can fit? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Get out of here. 10 electrons could fit there. All right. So that takes care of 30 total electrons. And now I'm at 31 electrons, 32 electrons, 33 electrons, 34 electrons. Where am I? Fourth energy level, P sub level. Oh, look. Fourth energy level, P sub level. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 electrons. So you can use the periodic table the same way you use this diagram, and we'll keep working on it, peeps. Okay. Um, is there a shorter way to do this? Look how long that took us. Look at that long thing. There is. Okay. Noble gases are stable elements because they have full energy levels um, of valence electrons, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, so instead of going all the way through the whole periodic table, you can find the noble gas, that comes before the element you're looking at, okay? So let's use selenium as our example. Here's selenium, right? The noble gas that comes before it is argon before it, right? It can't be krypton because that comes after. It has to be before. So you start by taking the noble gas. We're making selenium's electron configuration. And it's noble gas that comes before it is argon. So I put it in brackets, argon in brackets, all right? Start with the noble gas that comes before it, argon in brackets, all right? That puts me right here. So now this bracket represents, this represents, represents 18 electrons. The first 18 of selenium's electrons are represented by this argon in brackets. So where am I after that? One, two, three, four. So here's argon. So here's where I am on the periodic table after argon. So I'd start with the number four, because I'm in the fourth period. S, because I'm over in the S block, two electrons. And then over here, I'm in the third energy level, D sublevel, where I could fit 10 electrons. And then over here, one, two, three, four. To get to selenium, I'm still in the fourth energy level, P block with four electrons. Okay, So selenium can be represented by the noble gas electron configuration, or shorthand, with argon and bracket. Let's try germanium. Hey, germanium's before selenium. Whoa, convenient. So then you look to germanium, and then you go back to the noble gas that comes before it. So germanium has 32 electrons. So again, I'm going to use argon in brackets, and then I'm going to go to the fourth energy level, S sublevel, put two. Third energy level, D sublevel, and put 10. And then fourth energy level, P sublevel, but this time I'm going to stop at two because I have to get to germanium. Okay. We'll practice in class, but at least you have some examples to look at. Okay. So there's a new vocab word here. Okay. So it's two vocab. Valence electrons. Definition. Outermost electrons. So how do we find which electrons are in the outermost part of an atom? It's the furthest away from the nucleus. Well, they're the highest energy level S and P electrons. Okay. It's also periodic. Um, so if you go to hydrogen... It would have a 1s1, so it has one valence electron. Okay. If I go to uh, sodium, I'm sorry, lithium, which is right under hydrogen on the periodic table, its electron configuration would be 2s1, well, it would be 1s1, I'm sorry, two, <laughs> holy moly, hard, let's go, 1s2, 2s1, so its highest energy level, s electrons, sodium has one outer electron. Let's look at a uh, boron, which is right here. Boron's electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. All right? So highest energy level that boron uses is the second energy level. S and P sublevel together, boron has three valence electrons. Right? Let's find another element. Um, let's try selenium because we've been talking about it so much. All right? Selenium's um, outer electron configuration. We said it was argon in brackets, and then 4s2, 3d10, 4p4. 
All right, so selenium is right here. Highest energy level, fourth energy level, S plus P electrons, S plus P electrons equals six. So selenium has six valence electrons. Now, let's look at something else about the periodic table. So I'm going to erase some of this stuff. Hopefully you get down, but remember, you can pause every while. So, if we look at the periodic table, every element over here is 1a and 2a, and then 3a, 8a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a. Uh, selenium's in group 6a, and we just found out selenium has six valence electrons. Um, when we were talking about lithium, lithium is in group 1a, and lithium had one valence electron. So number of valence electrons matches, matches a group number. number. Coincidence? Not even close. So the reason we organize a periodic table this way now and have all these patterns is to help us find things like number of valence electrons. So valence electrons help us determine charge. And when you get over to this side, starting with neon, group 8A, neon has eight valence electrons. And neon's a stable, noble gas that doesn't react. And then argon, krypton, xenon, radon, all have eight valence electrons. And so all these other elements try to be like the noble gases. So fluorine has seven valence electrons and makes a negative one charge. Because once it gets another electron, then it has eight. Eight is great. Oxygen, group 6A, has six valence electrons. Once it gains two more, then it's going to be stable like neon and have eight valence electrons. Um, these guys are a little different. This is group 1A. That makes a one plus charge. So once sodium loses one of its outer electrons, then it's going to be more like neon, which has eight valence electrons in its outer energy level. So, metals lose electrons to be like noble gases, and non-metals gain electrons. Okay. So, let's play what element am I? Woo, fun times. So, we got to figure out what element this is. So, we add up 10, 11, 12, and 6 is 18, 19. 19 electrons. So, I'm thinking it's potassium. Woo. All right. And then we add 20 electrons. So, I'm thinking... Am I thinking what you're thinking? Hopefully, calcium. Yay. So you can figure out what elements are by adding up the number of valence, uh, not valence, total electrons in their electron configuration. Okay. What about what ion? Got to be careful. All right. So this must be the original electron configuration. Another electron was added. And so we now have 10 electrons total, but started with nine. So this is the element fluorine with nine electrons because it has nine protons. So this must be the fluoride ion. Yay! Because now it has ten electrons because it gained one. There's all these exceptions to electron configuration rules and what scientists have determined. Silver is one of those exceptions. If I was to write the noble um, gas configuration for silver, then I would need um, 40, uh, I always need 47 electrons to be silver, okay? And then the noble gas that comes before silver is krypton, okay? And that takes care of the first 36 electrons. So then we're in period one, two, three, four, five. Five S, two, and four D. All right, this is what we expect for silver, all right? But what we find out for silver and then um, for real, silver's outer electron configuration is 5s1 for the um, 9. Nope, for the 10. 5s0 for the 10. Okay. okay, no, just kidding. Let me erase that. We'll talk about silver when we talk about ions. Yeah, silver is an exception to for ions. Silver is an exception as an ion. Let's look at chromium. Uh, I'll explain. I'll explain that one in class. I'll explain the ion. Right. Chromium 
is going to be um, element number 24. And it's going to start with argon's electron configuration. That's 18 electrons. And then we're at 4s2, 3d, Expect this, but really get this for S1, 3, 3, 5. All right, so what would 4S1 look like if we were doing orbital diagrams? One, two, three, four, five, three, D. So 4S1, 3D5 will look like this. And this is more stable, and there's data to support that this figure configuration is more stable than this one. One, two, three, four. So this is more stable when um, chromium is one electron in the 4s orbital, and then five electrons half filling, half fill the 3d sublevel. Okay. And we'll look at ions in class with silver. Okay, ground state versus excited state. So when we talk about elements giving off light when they're energized, or when you add electricity to them and then light gets given off, elements start with their electrons in the lowest energy levels like we've been talking about. But if you add energy, the electrons can jump to a higher energy level. Okay. And you can see that electron has gone from here to here. But when that electron goes back down to, so this is excited state, excited state is when an electron takes energy and jumps up. Then when that electron loses the energy, it gives it off as light. And it goes, the electron goes back to the ground state. We see that light given off, okay? And it's always specific amounts of light for each element. Okay, so this is a ground state atom where you would expect the electrons to be. This is an excited state atom where an electron that used to be here must have been promoted with energy. Energy allows this electron to jump up. When that electron jumps back down, it's going to give off lights. Okay. All right, so book connections. I know this is long, but just stick with me, folks. Uh, make sure you can do these questions. Do these. Do these. Do these. Do these. This makes me smile. All right, so review. Electron configurations are periodic. Use your three rules to fill up the uh, electron orbitals. Valence electrons are the most S and P orbitals. They're used for bonding, and there's some half filled stability um, exceptions to electron configuration. Okay, hopefully all of this makes some more sense. And don't worry, we'll work on it in class. Peace out.